Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. We're going to begin looking at Joshua chapter 7, verse 10 through 13, and we're going to be talking to you about the power of personal responsibility. The power of personal responsibility. Let's read the scripture, Joshua 7, verse 10 through 13. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? That might be a good uh, wake-up call for all of us today, in America especially. That we get up and stop lying on our face or stop just being silent about what's happening around us and uh, begin to seek the face of the Lord and then begin to uh, volunteer to the leadership of the Holy Spirit as to what we are to do. For there are surely some things that scripturally and spiritually we not only have a responsibility to do, but we have an expectation uh, from the Lord and an expectation from righteousness. We have an expectation from a born again and spirit filled heart to be people of action. And again, we're talking about the power of personal responsibility. Let's go on in verse 11 of chapter seven of, of Joshua. Uh, Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you any more, unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves tomorrow, because the Lord says, uh, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. So to summarize it just briefly, uh, Joshua 7, uh, 10, and, and the uh, continuing verses through verse 13 we find a real startling message from the Lord to Joshua. And he talks about uh, why there has been a defeat uh, for Israel at Ai. And the verse holds a valuable lesson for us today. Pardon me. <laughs> holds a valuable lesson for us today in the area of keeping our faith and because we have faith, obeying the teachings of Scripture and the leadership of the Holy Spirit so that we do not face the consequences of sin and disobedience and uh, uh, inactivity, uh, becoming complacent and not making a difference with the breath we breathe and the life we enjoy that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart as well as the actions of our feet and our hands would be there to make a difference on behalf of uh, not only the kingdom of God, but on behalf of our nation, on behalf of our family, that we would fulfill our personal responsibility as individual Christians. First, we need to understand the context. And if we look at chapter 7, verse 1 through 9, the children of Israel had committed a trespass regarding the accursed things. Achan the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, and of the tribe of Judah, they took things that God had forbid them to take, and therefore they were accursed things. And the anger of the Lord was burning against not just Achan for what he had done, but for the fact that Israel had become so complacent that they were not holding people accountable to their personal responsibilities and we may not realize it, but uh, the sin of one impacted all mankind, and that was Adam. And uh, for all these thousands of years, we have all faced the consequent consequences of a man's action uh, that was in dis disobedience to God. 
and we may not comprehend this, but the reality is the sin of one person can infect a church. It can infect a family. It can infect a nation, as it did Israel. And it, verse 2 says, Joshua sent men uh, from Jericho to Ai, uh, which is besides Beth Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said to them, Do not let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up. And do not weary all the people there, for the people of Ai is just a few. Uh, so about 3,000 men went up there from the people, and they fled before the men of Ai, verse 5. And the men of Ai struck down about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shebarim, and uh, struck them down uh, on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Verse 6. Joshua tore his clothes, fell on the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Verse 7, Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us to the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. O oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? And for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us. Cut off your name from the earth, and then will you do? F what will you do for your great name? So to fully grasp what happened, uh, because of the uh, complacency about what to do right, and uh, the re personal responsibility of every individual in the camp of Israel in the nation of Israel at that time that was gathered, uh, they, they have not only a responsibility as a nation, uh, we have responsibilities as a church, as a community, but we also have personal responsibilities. And when one individual failed in that, and it was tolerated, accepted, and ignored, uh, it wasn't their problem. They didn't do anything, but Achan had done something. And the Lord comes to uh, Joshua and said, get up off your face and do something. And that is something that you and I as believers, and if you're not a believer and listening to this today, you still have a responsibility to stand for what is right. I am abhorred, and I'm sure God is, and is going to hold our nation accountable, our civic leaders and others that have allowed people to come in and literally decimate businesses, destroy, steal, rob, uh, all kinds of horrible, immoral sins are happening and being tolerated and ignored. And even when people are caught, they're being turned loose with no consequence. And uh, there's going to be a judgment coming. And we must understand that this story in scripture surely teaches that. Uh, this act led to Israel's defeat and it put them in a place of great compromise. We need to recognize uh, that sin is not acceptable. Uh, disobeying the commandments of God is not acceptable. There are consequences for anyone who does that. Uh, Romans 6.23 is very clear. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin in any form, always has a consequence. Achan's disobedience resulted in the loss of Israeli lives and a setback in their conquest to take the promised land. Our sin, any sin, can hinder spiritual growth. It can allow there to be a uh, manifestation of uh, consequences that are destructive judgment that will be severe if it is not changed and dealt with immediately. We must be aware of those consequences and that disobedience will lead when we know what God would have us to do to deal with sin and we don't do it. It's going to lead to further judgment and consequences. Uh, we need to uh, recognize the consequences of sin and we need to take personal 
accountability and responsibility for the things that are happening, not only in our heart and mind, in our family, in our community, but in our nation, in our church. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But the consequences, when we, do no, we tolerate sin, we ignore it, we allow our family, our spouses, our children to be involved in things that we know are wrong and we don't hold them accountable, we're failing in our own responsibilities. And uh, Joshua had a responsibility of the leader of the nation, uh, the priests, the people, the judges, others that may be aware of right and wrong and see wrong and don't say anything and don't deal with it. But God's going to hold not only the individual accountable, but if we don't stand against it, he's going to hold us accountable. If we don't call it sin when it is sin and, and try to lead people to Christ and turn them away from their evil ways, uh, when we allow it, we're participating in it. Uh, when Joshua fell on his face, the Lord's response was to challenge him to get up and take personal responsibility as a leader because of what had happened in an ind individual's life. Likewise, we need to acknowledge our own responsibilities uh, for the choices we make and be willing to face the consequences with humility and repentance and allow God to begin to help us do what is right and turn the tide of ungodliness. Uh, the fourth thing I want to mention that seeking forgiveness and restoration, uh, Psalm 51, verse 10 through 12, Create in me a clean heart, David said. O God, renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with your generous spirit. When we stumble and fall, we need to immediately have an acknowledgement in our heart, I have sinned. We need to do what David did. Go to him in prayer, go to God in prayer, and repent, confess it, and ask God to redeem us and cleanse us, change our heart, return the joy of our salvation, and renew a right spirit within us. Uh, God's promise to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to put us back into a relationship and a position of righteousness uh, just as if it never happened, if we truly are repentant and turn from the wickedness. Uh, we need to find peace, mercy, grace, and forgiveness in, in, in our relationship with the Lord when things have gone awry. We need to learn from our mistakes. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11 as a dog returns to its own vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. Do you see a wise man in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for that person. So a person that will look at themselves, see if they see truth and ignore it. That's not wisdom. That's not righteousness. It's disobedience and it's rebellion. And Joshua's defeat and Ai serves as a valuable lesson, not only for them in that day, but for you and I today, uh, that our failures, we should not allow them to define us. We need to bring that to God, repent of it, and abandon that direction in our life, involvement, relationship with ungodliness and evil, and turn our hearts toward the Lord in repentance, uh, receive from him his mercy and his grace, and, and then allow the Holy Spirit to help us walk in spiritual victory. If we look at 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, it gives us the understanding of how to cultivate a spirit of obedience. 1 Samuel 15, 22. Uh, Samuel, so Samuel said, Has the Lord uh, as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, 
and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. Now listen to the thought here. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. It's better just to live for God and do what's right and hold ourselves accountable as well as others than it is to have to pay the penalty and suffer judgment and consequence and have a curse placed upon you. He said, uh, for rebellion, uh, disobedience, rebellion, is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Uh, we need to be careful in our lives that we don't allow ourselves to become like the world in uh, following the carnal flesh and living in deception and lies and ignoring what is right because we feel like, well, it's not my responsibility. And God come to Joshua and he said, Joshua, get up off your face. Even though you're praying and you're overwhelmed and you're broken because what's happened to the army, I want you to get up and be personally responsible to deal with what's going on in the nation. And we need to do that in our personal lives. We need to do it in our family. We need to do it in the community, in our school systems, in our churches in our community relationships and in our nation and strive to be a testimony in our world. Uh, disobedience is as a sin of witchcraft. It's rebellion against God, against right, against truth. And we need to turn our heart toward the Lord. And we need to repent. We need to stop being so stubborn about just doing nothing and turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to what we know is going on. Achan's disobedience caused a, a fracture, a rupture in the Israelites' relationship with God. Uh, God can't bless evil. He can't bless disobedience, and he can't bless people who have just stuck their head in the sand, and they're not saying anything about what's wrong. They're not doing anything about it. They're just uh, kind of ignoring it. We have a responsibility to shine the light of truth. And to call sin, sin. Uh, if not, we're going to experience the wages of sin, which is death. But we need to experience the gift of God. The only way to have that in our life and God's blessing and favor is to walk in obedience and to walk as people of truth and righteousness, be unashamed and unafraid to stand for what is right and against what is wrong. If we want to avoid the consequences of disobedience, and stubbornness like is in our world today, we need to have and develop and strengthen the spirit of obedience to the teachings of God's Word. Uh, encouraging accountability, uh, not only among ourselves and our family, our brothers and sisters, but in our leadership, in our nation, in our community. Encourage it in the community. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1 and 2. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let us each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another, for each one shall bear his own load. And you and I have our own personal responsibility to live godly and live in a right relationship with the Lord, humble ourselves and be obedient to the teachings of God's word and to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But we also that's bearing our own personal responsibility. But then he also said, when you see someone taken in, an, uh, in a trespass, something that they're doing wrong, go to them. Don't ignore it and don't shy away from it. Don't turn your back from it. Go to them in a spirit of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness and restore them. Help them come back and see what's wrong and come to believe that what they're doing is not right and walk with them in support and encouragement that not only you bear your load, but you help them bear their load so that we can see the favor 
and the blessing of God in our personal lives, in our home, in our churches and community, and upon our nation. Again, we need the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and adds no sorrow, takes it away. Uh, our actions, if we look at Joshua 7.10, reminds us that we have a personal responsibility to get up and act. God said to Joshua, get up off your face and do something about what's happening. Our actions and lack or lack thereof have consequences. It's crucial that we take personal responsibility of not only our choices, thoughts and feelings and emotions, actions and reactions, but that we seek God for personal forgiveness, forgiveness for our family, forgiveness for our church, our community, for our nation and our world, and that we learn from our mistakes, that we don't just turn our backs and uh, uh, shy away from what we know is going on, that we stand up, we take action, we repent, we bring the truth and forgiveness and mercy to those that have failed and get them to receive forgiveness and seek God and turn from their rebellious and stubborn ways and find a good relationship with the Lord. I pray that God will help us all as individuals and collectively to cultivate a spirit of obedience and worship and encourage others around us to live responsible lives. There's power in having personal responsibility. There's strength and there's favor and blessing that comes from taking personal responsibility to live godly in an evil world and to hold others accountable by shining light on what's wrong and shining light on what they can do to find the blessing, the, the forgiveness and the approval and favor of God upon your life, your family, upon our nation. We pray these things and encourage you to support them and pursue them in your personal life. And we pray it and ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus. May God richly bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Let's be personal, personally responsible of our own actions, thoughts, and involvements. Amen.